So in this morning's doctrinal teaching time, I want to talk about protecting your mind in these last hours. Protecting your mind in these last hours. Philippians 4, beginning in verse 1, he says, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for. Amen. That's, that's the way I felt till I got here today. I'm glad to see everybody. My joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech you, uh, Euodias, and I beseech, uh, I don't know how to say that. Some people say Sintiki, Sintish, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. So here we are. We're to stand fast in the Lord, verse 1, and to be of the same mind in the Lord, verse 2. I thank God for other believers. I thank God that I've got the church of Jesus Christ to come to and to be a part of, and not just when we gather. But I feel that you are and I are both bone of Christ's bone and flesh of His flesh. Amen. As even when we're not gathered together, our hearts love one another and we want to see each other have great joy. We want to be with one another when it comes to temptations. We want to uh, be able to confess faults to one another without judgment except by the Word of God. Amen. Do it the way God does it. We want to be able to share in holiness. We're to stand fast in the Lord. We're after the same mind. And here we are in the darkest hours, right before the Lord comes. This whole thing with the coronavirus has got to tell you that this is either the greatest dry run ever for the new world order, or it is about to be born any minute. Right. Amen. In the Lord, we... We don't fight. We don't take up arms and so on. I mean, we can. That's a totally different lesson. But our battle is in our mind. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. See, there's a fight going on. There's a war going on. And it's for your mind. Yes. It says, For the weapons of our wealth, warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We need this in these days because once, once the persecution can come to your mind, you will fail. Yeah. Now, verses 4 through 9, which is our text actually, shows us how to build spiritual barricades around our mind. And that's what we need. We want to keep the world, the flesh, and the devil out. And we have to build these barricades. And He's showing us how to do that effectively. And, and then there's a, a, another wonderful verse that says in, in 1 Peter 1, 13, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. When we uh, build up our mind, when we put the right barricades around our mind and fight a spiritual uh, fight, it will protect our thoughts, it will protect our emotions, and it will protect even our will from the constant barrage of the Antichrist, the devil, and his system. Amen. Amen. We will walk in peace, we will walk in joy, and we will walk in victory even if everything in this world is crumbling around us. And we'll do it even unto the death of our flesh if we put up the barricades that we're supposed to put up. Amen. Most of the time we, we want to protect the flesh and that's how you know the barricades aren't up. Amen? Barricades start from the inside and work out. Yeah. Amen? And the more barricades you got up, the better it is. Because that makes the barrage that comes against you a whole lot harder. Yeah. Now I'm going to tell you, they may be able to take our bodies. They may be able to starve us out. I don't know. I don't know. But I know this. Once they get to my mind, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Amen. And I don't have to be. 
I can walk by the grace of God. So I want to encourage the brethren. And you say, well, this is a doctrinal teaching time, Brother Sam. Yes, it is. And I want to show you a doctrine, uh, of, a very important doctrine of sanctification. And it's called protecting your mind to grow. Amen? Especially in these dark hours. So I've got four or five maybe uh, barricades that you can build around your mind. Amen? So the first one I want to point out, and this is so obvious, and this is something that's so easy for the Christian to do. It's the barricade of praise. The barricade of praise. Amen. Verse 4 of our text says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Well, the word always or always, as we like to say, means in every circumstance, all the time. I heard a sermon from an old black man one time, and man, I wish I could preach like that guy could, but he, he would name all these things that was going on, and he'd say, praise God anyhow. Amen. He's so right. Amen. Amen. You know what? We're going through a bunch of garbage in our personal lives, are we not? Amen. Some of us are in physical pain. If you walked in right now, we're going to need to put in some handicap spots or something. Amen. Because we got people that are kind of moving around slowly, sitting in chairs, uh, easy chairs, uh, uh, hurt feet, all kind of stuff. That's a physical barrage. We've got a barrage against our church and those that hate us uh, will speak out against us constantly. Amen. We got a barrage coming from, from the, the government, the one world government. You've got a barrage in your homes. You've got a barrage with your families. And I want to tell you one easy way that you can put a barricade around your mind is to praise God anyhow. Amen. Amen. Just keep on praising God. In Psalm 37, 23, he says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Amen. Amen. In Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Hebrews 13, 13 says, Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. As long as we're in the world, we're not going to bear the reproach and we're not going to have the joy that Christ had. Amen. He goes on, he says, For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Amen. Amen. By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. Amen. Thank you for those testimonies this morning. In 1 Corinthians 15, the resurrection chapter, it says, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Praise God anyhow. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Amen. Praise God. That's a barricade we can put up. Boy, when we stop praising God, the barricade's down. Number two. A barricade of patience. Look at verse 5. <clears throat> Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Oh my, moderation. Moderation. It means a restraint of violent passions. It means putting others before self. I don't know of a better place than the church of Jesus Christ to help you put away your violent passions. Amen. Because we'll preach on them and we'll stomp them out and by the grace of God, the Spirit of God will move in, in, in the believer's heart and cause us to grow closer to Christ. As a matter of fact, this chapter 4 comes on the coattails of, of here at chapter 2 where it says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now let me tell you something today. We are the sons of God. Amen. Amen. We're not equal with God. We know better than that. But in Christ, He calls us brethren. We have a very high and exalted position in the Lord our God, our Father. Amen. 
Amen. And though we are in Him and though we are lifted up and separated from this earth, listen to what Jesus did. But made Himself of no reputation and took up upon Him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, He humbled Himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Right. Wherefore God hath also... Uh, also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. That is our life. Amen. That's what we do. We are praising God and we patiently wait for His return by the grace of God. We keep reading. We keep praying. We keep rejoicing. We keep gathering. We keep standing for Jesus. Amen. And we're going to be patient through it. I'm going to tell you what will happen. If we're patient concerning these things and we've learned to restrain our violent passions, it will never get hurt by anybody else. Amen. My goodness, how many people in churches get hurt. I think that sermon was about me. Well, you're probably right. Amen. Amen. If, that, if that's what you think. Now, if you think it's personal, you're definitely wrong. This is all about helping people. Amen. Are you getting help this morning? Amen. That's why we're here. Amen. I need your help. I need your blessing. God gave me His Spirit. He gave me His book. He gave me His Son at the right hand. He gave me everything, but He also gave me a church to encourage me and to strengthen me and to help me get back on track Amen. whenever I get off track. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you something? Shepherds are sheep too. Can I tell you that? People don't realize that, but they are. I want to tell you, the tax will never stop. Even if these weren't the last hours, the attacks would never stop. You stay in moderation. You put others before yourself. You, you be more willing to suffer than you are to get glory. And I'm going to tell you something. It will protect you from a spirit of vengeance. And we have to have a spirit that is not of vengeance in these last days. For if we do, we may cry out to our persecutors in manners that would bring a slight to God's throne. Amen. We don't want to do that. Listen, if we have to stand before our persecutors and patiently wait, we do it to the praise of God. We keep that barricade up that no matter what, they, the, the book of uh, Martyr's Mirror shows countless times they praised God and praised God and praised God while they're afflicted brought down horrible torments of, of hell on them. Amen? Yeah. We are to be patient. We don't want to have vengeance. Amen at all. Number three, we need to set up the barrage. I'm sorry, we don't want a barrage. We want a barricade. All those B words. Amen? <clears throat> we want a barricade of prayer. Verses 6 and 7. And I realize I'm not doing these verses any real justice. I'm not taking them apart, I, you know, breaking them down. I get that. But I'm trying to just get that one theme this morning that we need to be bolstered against this Antichrist system because he will wear out the saints. Yeah. Hey Amen. That's exactly what he's going to do. And he's going to try to get to our soul. Boy, if he can get to our soul and we lose our testimony, that's all the devil wants. Hey Amen. Our flesh means nothing to him. It's our testimony he hates. But in verses 6 and 7, he says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Prayer is just asking of God. It includes praise. Supplication is praying for other people. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Now, God already knows them. Yeah. Amen. He just has to use language to communicate with us. Verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which patheth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Isn't that what we want? Even in the midst of persecution, don't we want the peace of God which passeth all understanding to be flooding our hearts and souls? Amen. amen. We're going to have to set up a barricade of prayer. Amen. And our one thing uh, is the glory of God. That's the most important thing in our life. And it's one thing to have concerns. Amen. We all have concerns. 
Wednesday night is full of prayer about our concerns. That's following the Word of God. But it's a different matter entirely when the concerns have you. Yeah. Amen? 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. How in the world do you cast your care upon the Lord Jesus Christ? You get into prayer. That's how you do it. Amen? You cry out to Him. Listen, He says He'll keep your hearts and minds. That means He'll guard your hearts and minds. That means it'll set up a barricade around your heart and mind. And that's what we're trying to do today. Listen, we'll fail without a definite time of devotion and prayer in our lives. We will. I'm going to tell you what happens to pastor. Like I told you, we're sheep before shepherds. A lot of times our only Bible study is to prayer for sermons. I'll be honest with you. It happens sometimes. Boy, God is so gracious. And, and you think, well, if I got away with it this week, I can certainly get away with it next week. Souls keep getting saved, doctrine preached, lives turned around, God's merciful. And that's what I was trying to tell you this morning in my testimony is He delights in me, not because of what I've done, but because I'm in Him. And you know what? If anybody has ever sinned against God, you don't have to stay in that sin. And you don't have to think that you've been rejected or dejected by God. No. You must understand that He is... A satisfied, He is propitiated through Christ's blood and through His person and His death, burial and resurrection of which you had no part of except the fact that you were accepted in the beloved the day that you believed. I thank God that He changes our lives around through prayer. Oh, how we need a definite time of prayer in our lives. Amen. I'm still thankful on Wednesday nights we gather for prayer meeting now. Uh, to me, that's the number one reason we're together. And we needed that. We realized some years ago, oh, wow. We, we had people spread out everywhere. We couldn't even meet on Wednesday nights or even during the week. Everybody 20, 30 miles apart. Uh, we couldn't get together and do it. But I thank God the day that it was made available, all of our hearts clamored to come to God in prayer, in a corporate prayer of the church of Jesus Christ. How can you fail in that? Amen. Amen. And we come there and then, then we decided to add, well, a little devotional time with it. And we did that. And then we decided, hey, wait a minute, why don't we go through a book? Amen. And we started doing that. And that's what we're doing now is we're going through the book. But then there's something special about the saints on Wednesday nights. We go to prayer. Our hearts are laid out before God. It builds up another barricade, another wall of protection around us from everything on the outside trying to barrage our minds. Amen. They can have this flesh. It's the mind I don't want them to have. Amen. Number four, a barricade of purity. Purity. Verse eight, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true. I love that song. Have y'all heard that from the um, Seminole string band? Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are just, and so on. Um, or honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Being virtuous. You know, as the barricades are built outward, there becomes more protection yeah. against the barrages of the mind. And this, this one particular one here, being pure, keeps the barrage away from your flesh. Being pure is where your mind is protected, but also it keeps your old man from coming back up. Romans 12, 1 and 2, he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Now to do that, it has to be led by the mind to do so. Yep. But he says, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In other words, you will think on things that are true and honest and just and pure and lovely and good report of virtue and of praise. You will do all these things. You will hate gossip. The word renewing here means to make new again. It means to repair, reestablish, 
repeat, revive, renovate. It's the attitude of Philippians 4.13 which says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. It's through Him. Amen. Sometimes Christians, just like Adam, we think that God's holding out on us somehow. We'll go for some type of legitimate need that we have in this old flesh. And I mean not only the body, but I mean the old man that's still not resurrected yet. Amen. And we'll go for some need of that, but we'll try to handle it illegitimately. And just like lost sinners do. God says, if you lay that out, you lay your body out, you put your flesh out and you do it in purity and trust me and it'll be a wall of protection around your mind. Amen. Fifthly, and I think this is maybe the last one, yeah. We, need, we are to build a barricade of praise, a barricade of patience, a barricade of prayer, a barricade of purity. Boy, that's a lot of walls. But we're also to build a barricade of passion. Look at verse 9. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and a God of peace shall be with you. Passion for God's Word. Passion for God's ways. Passion for God's wonder. Passion for God's will. All found in the doctrine of the Word of God. To have a passion to do the things. Not only believe them, not only say them, but to actually do them. Do you know why so many people fail in temptation? It's because they never swim against it. Yeah. They're used to failing. I want to tell you, when you swim against it and God gives you victory, and He does, He gives you incremental victory, it shows your conversation in the Lord. It shows your way of life to other sinners. And it brings glory to God, which is the number one concern of every believer. And I want to tell you something. Doers are the only ones on the solid rock. Right. And it's not privately held beliefs. It's doing. It's doing. And then he said this, And the God of peace shall be with you. That's all I want. See, that's the summary of all this. When we set up those barricades, and, and by the way, you can only do it if you're saved, amen? But if we set up these barricades the way God instructs us in His Word, we'll know His presence like we never have before. No matter what the persecution is. I don't care what the World Health Organization is doing. The United Nations is doing. I don't care what the federal government's doing. I don't care what the big name Baptist churches are doing. I don't care what so-and-so down the street is doing. All I know is I want to live for the glory of God with being consumed by His presence. Amen. And the only way is to set up these barricades. This is the goal. We have peace of mind in the storm. His presence is guaranteed with, your, with our obedience. Do you know there's no peace for the disobedient child? We were all children at one time and had fathers. And if you were disobedient, was there peace? No, no boy. You couldn't wait to get this time of your life over with so you could get back to peace. Amen? I mean, an example, the Great Commission. The way Jesus put it, He said that we're to go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and teaching them to um, observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Now watch, there's a command. And if we do this, He says, watch, and lo, I will be with you always, even unto the end of the world. See, if there's no go, there's no low. You understand? And sometimes we have to go low, I get it, but... If there's no go, there's no low. We sometimes expect to be disobedient and to have little pet sins in our lives that are just fine. You know, God hadn't judged me by these and somebody in the Bible did these and, and maybe God didn't say much about it to them and, and now here I am, I've justified things and I've grown cold. Can I tell you something? There's no such thing as a singular sin. Can I tell you that? Let's say your sin is gossip. Can I tell you, that's not your only sin. There's something that helped build gossip up. Yeah. If your sin is pornography, it's not by itself 
Amen. It's not, I've got everything in my life is good except this one thing. That's not true. It's also accompanied by other things. You're probably lusting in other ways. You're probably sinning in other ways. You're probably neglecting the Word of God. You're, you're, His presence is guaranteed when we obey. James 1.22 says, But be a doers of the Word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Amen. He's talking to Christians there. In Matthew 7.24, Therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, well, we're pretty good at that. Amen. Glory to God. Preach it, brother. Preach it. And then he says, and doeth them. Oh, <laughs> I forgot about that part. <laughs> you hear it. You do it. Look what Jesus says. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. It's a fortification. That's a good way to keep him from digging under too. Now, sinners... People that have never been truly born again by the Word of God. And it's a time like this, when people hear a message like this, they should examine themselves. Are you truly in the faith? Have you truly been born again? Because I'm going to tell you something. Isaiah 48, 22 is a message from God that should just resonate through your heart. And it says, There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Now, everything we're trying to do here in this message is to give the believer peace and strength in these last days as they barrage us with all their stuff that's meant to deceive the very elect. But it doesn't. If it were possible, it would, but it doesn't. But it's overwhelming. The, the, the sheeple, the stupidity, the nonsense. Do you see where I posted on Facebook about somebody saw kids playing on a playground and they weren't uh, observing social distancing. So you know what? People burned up the playground so the kids couldn't do it anymore. That's where we are. People are so incredibly spiritually dumb and numb, deaf, blind. And no matter what you say, they stay blind. These are the days. Jesus said, when the Son of Man returns, will He find faith on earth? Right. I say, praise God, by the grace of God, He'll find it right here at, at Old Paz Baptist Church and He'll find it in Sam Morris. Oh God, I pray. Amen. Let's stop right there. God bless you. Man.